I posted this video several months ago and it quickly became my most viewed video ever. This is what you can see in our night sky without any light pollution. People seemed astonished by what you could see with just your naked eye. Well in today's video, I'm going to be exploring our night sky from some of the best stargazing spots on the planet, as well as some of the worst. All in order to share with you some of the most spectacular sights that you can see with a zero dollar telescope. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So my plan for this video is to show you my 8 favourite wonders to look at with the naked eye. And you need to pay attention to number one, because if you blink, you might miss it. You may be surprised to know just how many people have seeing a meteor on their bucket list, especially since it's not an expensive activity like skydiving, it's free. Recently I camped out in my garden for several hours to observe the Perseid meteor shower. I saw loads of meteors, so if you're interested in watching them all with me, then check out the full video on my channel. Next up, speaking of fast moving points of light in our night sky, here are their much slower cousins, satellites. This mysterious train of lights isn't just one satellite, it's 52. These are the Starlink satellites shortly after being launched into orbit. Notice how they are all following the same trajectory as one another and maintain a steady brightness. But they get bigger, brighter and more mysterious than that. This bright light is constantly outshining every single star in our night sky. It's one that I've watched waltz across the ceiling of our planet hundreds of times, and I've been able to do so because unlike meteors, we can predict when this light is going to appear. That bright point of light just behind me is the International Space Station. Look how bright it is right now. It's as bright as the planet Jupiter at its peak. I've attached a link in the description to a website that uses your location to determine when the next set of visible ISS passes are in your area. Now, things are starting to get a little fuzzier, starting with our next wonder. This one is probably my favorite of them all. The Orion Nebula is just so enchanting. It demands further attention. The longer you look at it, the more you want to explore it. Unfortunately, it is one of the easiest deep sky objects to observe. Even the cheapest pair of binoculars or telescope will reveal the secrets of this stellar nursery. Carrying on with the theme of fuzzy lights, here's one that will really test your eyesight. Any guesses on what it is? That fuzzy patch of light is the Andromeda Galaxy. It's two and a half million light years away and it is the most distant point of light you can see with the naked eye. As first seen in this video that I played at the start. You are seeing trillions of solar systems that together form our nearest galactic neighbour. Look at it, just hanging there, suspended in our night sky, almost as if the galaxy were watching over us. Scaling things down a bit, we've reached number five. We're still looking at collections of stars, but this time within our own galaxy. Do you see that small cluster of stars just above my head? These are the Pleiades, otherwise known as the Seven sisters. Three of my favourite star clusters to look up at are the Seven Sisters, the Double Cluster and the Beehive Cluster. But if these magical gems don't tickle your pickle, then perhaps something a little closer to home will. Jupiter is arguably the easiest planet to observe. It's regularly visible throughout entire nights as it soars high up in the sky, outshining every other star. Admittedly, you're not going to see any surface detail on Jupiter without the help of a telescope or a really cool camera. But its beauty is unparalleled, regardless of whether you're in the most light polluted skies on Earth, it's still visible to just the naked eye. You can see it here alongside Saturn and our moon. Speaking of the moon, have you ever seen it do this? I don't know about you, but despite it being in a crescent phase, I can still see the dark side of the moon. This is due to a phenomena known as Earthshine. During twilight hours, it's possible for us to see all of the moon. I think that's a pretty cool thing to see, especially since 99% of the time that we see the moon is unexpected. We're always slightly shocked by its appearance. So to see the old moon in the arms of the new moon is an even more unexpected and wonderful sight. 
But in terms of surprise appearances, my last wonder takes the cake, as my meetings with them are always as exciting as they are unexpected. As well as being aware of the location of my camera equipment, I also had to be careful not to step on any of the locals, that is, the crabs. It wouldn't be long before I'd abandoned filming to focus on filming them in their adventures to cure their midnight munchies with these magnificent blue bioluminescent plankton. When we look up at the night sky, we can see roughly 6,000 stars with the naked f See how big that bow was? That was f***ing huge. Well, that's enough filming for forever. What I'm now going to show you is six different stargazing locations, which vary from the best places on our planet to stargaze to the absolute worst. Our first location is 10,000 feet above sea level on the edge of a volcano. These are the crystal clear skies of Tenerife, Spain. I have never seen this many stars in my entire life. You can actually see the Milky Way band stretching across the sky. And you only can see that because there is absolutely no light pollution here. That little cluster of stars just up there is the Seven Sisters. And I'm going to be honest, from where I live, you can barely tell they're seven because the skies are nowhere near as clear as they are here. They are crystal clear. What a sight. See that one? That's another meteor that's just gone past. The remote desolation of the location only added to the epic scenery. When I stepped out on the first night, it was a different type of quiet. I was almost expecting to hear the muted roars of stars echo through space. In terms of rankings on the portal scale, this spot is a number one. It simply does not get any better than this. I say that, but then my next destination is the tropical paradise known as the Maldives. I spent half of my visit here on a local island filled with plenty of evening entertainment, but once this was over, the real show began. Because of the light pollution, the bottle was as high as free. But that's okay, because for the second half of my trip, I was traveling to a very remote island to stay in my own private overwater villa. It truly doesn't get any more magical than swimming beneath the stars. Until, you know, this happens. Back in England, the cold temperatures regularly get the better of me, and I end up retreating back inside once I've lost all feeling in my fingers, nose and toes. Here in this tropical paradise, the temperatures are perfect for a night of falling asleep beneath the stars to the sounds of crashing waves. The constellation of Orion passed directly overhead, which meant this was my view before I fell asleep each night. And snap back into reality, welcome back to the polluted skies of urban England. Oh, yeah. But even here, we can still admire many of our favourite sights. I think there are very few things in life that everyone can agree on, but one of those things has to be that views like this are just the greatest sights there is. And it's completely free. This doesn't cost you a penny. Anyone can step outside and appreciate the beauty of the night nice sky. Now, as we crank up the portal, the stars begin to get lost in the light. How tragic that they are outshone by the latest LED street lamps. I suppose this is the price of urbanization. The price due for the increase in housing and ultimately street lighting is a toll that unfortunately must be paid with starlight. But all is not lost, for even here in the center of Pisa, hundreds of stars are still visible to us. Once we find a darker spot to view them from, there's still hope for as few that continue to look up. Even at its most suffocating, not even all of the light and air pollution that clouds central London can shield the planets and moon from us. 
In this environment, the Pleiades is the only star cluster from the list of Messier objects that still remains clearly visible to us. But have you ever wondered what the brightest cities on our planet would look like if they just turned their lights off for a little bit? So let's just imagine for a moment what London would look like without any air or light pollution. So, my final gift to you are three friendly tips that will help maximize the number of stars that you can see with your very own zero dollar telescope. Number one, be patient. Countless enthusiasts aren't aware that our eyes need time to adjust to this unfamiliar darkness. Immediately after leaving the comfort of our warm, well-lit living rooms, the number of stars may seem tiny. If you step outside and look up, you will likely see 10 stars. But if you have patience, then you will see thousands. If you wish to unlock the universe, and all you have to do is wait. Number two, find somewhere dark. I'm not saying go hide under a blanket, that's no good. I mean, don't stand directly under street lamps. Find a park or somewhere a little less populated because once you do, the stars will reveal themselves to you. And finally, number three, avoid this guy. You wouldn't stargaze when the sun was up, would you? No. While the moon is not doing anything special, it's just reflecting sunlight onto us, and as a result, massively reducing how much we can see when looking up. So try and stargaze around a new moon when our lunar companion isn't busy trying to steal the spotlight, and as a result, obscures the starlight. So many different wonders in our night sky that you can appreciate without spending any money whatsoever. But what if you love this hobby so much that you want to take it to the next level? What if you do want to spend a little bit of money? Well, if that's the case, then boy, do I have some videos for you. In the coming weeks, I'm going to be posting follow-up videos to this, in which I explore what spectacular wonders you can witness for yourself when working on different budgets. So if you'd like to see more, then make sure you are subscribed. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Astronomical.